In this video, we'll be looking at gold versus real bond yields and the historical relationship between the two and how much predictive power this relationship might have for the gold price. So we'll start out here looking at nominal yields, specifically the 10-year U.S. government bond yield versus the gold price. Now, this yield shows us how much return we would make per year if we held these bonds to maturity. The main thing to consider here is that gold has no yield and actually has a holding cost of about 1-2% to per year usually, whether you store it physically or invest through an ETF, which has fees. So we would expect that when bond yields are rising, investors are more likely to move into bonds and away from gold because they can make a much higher return doing that and that if bond yields fall, gold becomes more interesting to investors because the relative cost of holding it goes down. Also, when the Fed begins to talk about hiking interest rates, we would expect yields to rise towards the level of the expected rate hikes. And that is what we are seeing in recent months, with the Fed talking about rate hikes and yields rising. However, we might expect that these rising yields would lead to gold declining, given the inverse relationship we just outlined. However, instead we're seeing gold rise in recent months, which shows that we need to consider a third factor here other than just the nominal yield and the gold price. This third factor we have to consider is inflation. So here we show the same data for nominal yields that was shown above, but just using the monthly average over the past year. Now, for these nominal yields, this is the return we get in terms of current dollars, but we have to adjust these for rising prices because the dollars may have been losing value over time and they would buy fewer goods if there has been significant inflation. And we can see here that inflation has been picking up significantly over the past year, from 1.4% in January 2021 to 7.5% as of January 2022. So to get to a real yield, we need to take the nominal yield and subtract inflation. And if we do that, we can see that real yields have actually turned heavily negative over the past year. So you have a situation where you are actually losing money by holding bonds and certainly losing way more right now than by holding gold with only a 1-2% to storage cost or fees with real yields having declined from negative 0.3% in January 2021 to negative 5.8% in January 2022. So you might ask why would people buy something like bonds which have heavily negative real returns at all, but we won't get into that as that is a whole other topic. So now we can go further back in history here to compare real bond yields to the gold price and see what this relationship looks like over a much longer period of time. So starting from the early 1970s, the U.S. goes off the gold standard, which had seen the gold price roughly fixed in terms of U.S. dollars. So inflation starts to pick up by the mid-70s because of this, and this drives the real yield negative, and we see our first big rise in gold from $36 per ounce to $162 per ounce by 1974. Now there is a brief rise in yields through to 1976, and a corresponding decline in the gold price, and then because of a second inflation shock, yields again go negative, and the gold price jumps to $615 per ounce. In the early 1980s, because of the rising inflation, there's a major intervention by the U.S. Federal Reserve to cut this, and real rates spike to 8.1%, which cuts the gold price in half to $317 per ounce. Now, real rates ease quite a bit from 1984 to 1987, and the gold price picks up again. But after that, though, from 1988 to around the mid-90s, both the real yield and the gold price flatten out, and everything gets quite a bit less volatile.
This low volatility period continues through the second half of the 1990s, but by the early 2000s, real yields are starting to slide towards zero and the gold price is starting to pick up. The 2008 financial crisis starts another period of volatility with the real rate going from negative 0.2% in 2008 to 3.6% in 2010 and then it goes negative again in 2011 and 2012. Now this drives up the gold price from $872 per ounce in 2008 to peak at $1,669 per ounce in 2012. So real yields start to pick up again as nominal yields rise but inflation stays very low and the gold price falls to $1,160 per ounce by 2015. Now both yields and gold remain quite flat until 2018 before yields start to dip in 2019 which sends gold up and then in the global health crisis they plummet in 2020 and hit their lowest level since the 1970s in 2021 which sends gold soaring again to $1,789 per ounce. And as we saw from the chart above, the current negative real yields are actually lower than the levels in the 1970s. So overall, what we see from this is that real yields do seem to be inversely correlated with the gold price. And if the Fed hikes rates, that if inflation stays high, real bond yields could still remain heavily negative. And this would likely support a strong gold price as the opportunity cost to hold it instead of bonds is actually quite low. So overall, what's been developing so far in the markets this year is generally in line with some of the main ideas for the gold sector that we've outlined in our upcoming product, the TSXV Top 50 Metal Miners, A Time for Caution including that we expect gold will hold up reasonably well this year, but that equity markets could take a substantial hit, including gold stocks and especially the riskier junior gold miners. The report gives an overview of the top 50 metal miners on the TSXV covering gold, silver, copper, and other base metals, royalty and streaming, lithium, and uranium companies. So if you are interested, that report will be available on our website, www.canadianminingreport.com soon. And we also have a free weekly report and other long-form regional reports on junior gold miners there. Also, we are very interested in your comments, so feel free to leave one below the video.